So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I picked up a gravel bike a little over a year ago. This is my Marin Gestalt X10, and I've done a significant number of upgrades to this, trying out parts to see what's worth the money. Two of the parts that I picked up are Chinese branded parts that seem to be pretty popular on YouTube and just across the internet because of the massive savings that you can get from them. One are these ICANN G24 wheels. These are an $800 carbon wheel set. And two is the L2 GRT group set made for gravel bikes specifically. So I wanna go over all my thoughts on what I think of the ICANN wheels and the L2 setup. But before we do that, let's take a look at the sponsor of today's video. Man, I really like this bike. It's still in such good shape, but I wish I would have bought a mountain bike instead. I wonder if I can get somebody to buy this e-bike from me. Hey, did you say you were wanting to switch over to an e-mountain bike? Yeah. I I do want to switch over to a mountain bike, but I just bought this not too long ago and it's in great shape. Oh yeah, no worries. Upway.co can actually sell your old e-bike and they also have brand new and certified used e-bikes that you can pick up. Oh, Upway can sell this for me? Yeah, Upway.co has a super simple process for selling your used e-bike. It only takes about three minutes online and they'll actually come to your door and pick up your bike for you. Well, tell me more. Well, not only does Upway offer to sell your used e-bike, they also offer new and certified used e-bikes. So you can pick up your brand new mountain bike that you've been wanting all this time. And if you decide to buy one of their certified used e-bikes, it goes through a vigorous 50 point inspection before they even list them online. So you know exactly what you're getting before you click that order button. That sounds exactly like what I need. I'm gonna list this bad boy on upway.co and also check out their new and certified used inventory. And thank you upway.co for sponsoring this video. So these ICANN wheels have been absolutely impressive over the last year. I've gotta say for a sub $800 carbon wheel set, I expected them to lose their trueness, have a crack, have a loose spoke, brake spokes constantly the hubs not work right. And that is completely opposite of what I experienced. These wheels are still 100% true. The spokes all feel to have the exact same tension, haven't broke a single spoke. The bearings, even after going on wet gravel rides and washing these wheels multiple times, still roll super smooth. The hubs have been absolutely amazing. I haven't even had to service the actual free hub on this. It still rolls and sounds absolutely amazing. Listen to this. That hub is super loud. So if you are really into loud hubs, and I am when it comes to road and gravel riding, then these wheels are gonna basically meet those needs. And look how smooth this thing actually rolls. I mean, it still to this day, it rolls so smooth. Very, very impressed. I'm impressed that I haven't even come close to breaking a spoke from what I can tell and how true these wheels actually are. Considering these wheels come in at under 1300 grams, I expected them to be a little bit fragile, but these are by far some of the strongest rims that I have ever used. Even with my basic wheels, I expect to break a spoke or have them come out of true after really hard riding. These wheels have held up to everything that I've thrown at them. So even after riding gravel roads, dusty gravel roads, wet gravel roads, single track, extremely rocky off-road paths, these wheels by far have just exceeded my expectations and I highly recommend these G24 ICANN wheels. Now, whenever I did go tubeless for the second time, I did have a little bit of difficulty getting these tires to pop on. It could have been the tire itself being a little bit stubborn, or it could have been how deep the internal channel is on these wheels. It seemed like the bead of the tire wanted to just sit in there and not pop out. I did get a tip from somebody that if I double layered the tape, that that potentially could help pop it out. So next time I put another set of tires on there, I'm gonna put some brand new tape on, I'm gonna double layer it, and then see if that helps pop the bead on just a little bit quicker. But that's really the only issue that I've had with these is getting the tubeless set up for the second time. The first time I went tubeless, it was completely flawless, and that could be because the tape was 
perfect. And the second time I was reusing the same tape that I had on the first set, which is probably a mistake on my part. But overall, I highly recommend the ICANN G24 wheels. Now let's talk about this derailleur setup back here and the L2 shifters. These are super, super interesting. So if we take a look at the L2 setup, this is an extremely affordable carbon fiber 12 speed setup for your gravel bike. You're gonna get a clutch rear derailleur. You're also gonna get these nice levers that are carbon fiber here, which I was a little bit worried that these might be brittle or flexible, but these things have been pretty rock solid. I didn't ever have to worry about these breaking on me whenever I went to go actually squeeze the brakes. I always felt really confident that this carbon fiber lever was really solid. Now the shifting into an easy gear is traditional. You just use this lever right here. You just push it in just like you would with Shimano or SRAM. But the shifting into a harder gear is a lever that's on the inside here. Now you can get to this whenever you're on top of the bars or whenever you're in the drops. But it is definitely one of those things that the first time somebody sees it, they're like, what, what is that? It does look cheap, but it does function. Now, with that said, the hoods are extremely comfortable. That's something that I really like about them. I love how tall these hoods are. They remind me of SRAM hoods. I never had to worry about slipping off of this. I always had a good place to hold on to it. So the hoods are definitely a plus. I really like how everything goes underneath the tape. All of your cables and your housings all go underneath the tape. The absolute best part of this L2 setup, in my opinion, are the brakes. This setup comes with two piston hydraulic brakes, both front and back. And I've got to say, these brakes have been extremely impressive. I've had zero issues when it comes to braking on these. Occasionally, I did get some brake rub issues, but that's really simple to solve by just realigning the actual uh, caliper itself. And that's pretty typical among other brake brands, but I haven't had any issues when it comes to actually being able to stop even on some really rough downhill sections. So the brakes on the L2 setup have been fantastic. Now, if we come back here and we take a look at this rear derailleur, this, is a pretty interesting rear derailleur. So the rear derailleur itself has functioned relatively well for the most part, but I would say this is where the majority of any issues that I've had with this setup have come from. It does have a carbon fiber cage, which is nice, adds to a little bit of lightness to it. The durability of it, this thing looks like it's held up really, really well. It shifts through the gears pretty smoothly in dry conditions. However, the other day, whenever I was on the backyard bash, I did go through some rain for about two and a half to three hours on some gravel roads. And if you've ever done that before, it's just really fine material that gets over everything whenever gravel roads get wet. And this thing started shifting absolutely awful. I would go to shift, it wouldn't make any move whether I was going up or down. If I was going into a bigger gear, it would typically take two shifts. And then whenever I eventually got about an hour into riding into the rain, getting down into a harder gear where the derailleur loses tension and that cable basically loosens up, I had to shift five times at one point to get the derailleur to actually move. And then whenever it did move, it jumped all five gears. So in the rain, this has not performed as well as what I would hope. But in the dry conditions, it did perform really well. I, I didn't have any issues with this until I rode it in the rain at the Backyard Bash this last month. So I was ecstatic about this all the way up until that event. And having that happen to me at that event really made me want to switch over to wireless. I'm very tempted to try L2's wireless setup because I do like the hoods. I just think having the cable in this particular derailleur, it's probably not the best setup overall for those type of conditions. Maybe the wireless setup, not having to worry about cable tension and just having its own little motor to move it back and forth would do a little bit better. But I could also just go with the tried and true and get a SRAM wireless setup and know that it's gonna work in absolutely awful conditions. So I'm gonna have to make a decision on whether or not I upgrade this to an L2 wireless or a SRAM or maybe even uh, a Shimano wired setup. 
we'll just have to see. But the big benefit that I find from the L2 setup is that this runs 12 speeds and you can run a wide range cassette. I'm running a mountain bike cassette on this. So I have a one by setup that's really close to a mountain bike, but I have a bigger front chain ring. So this is a 50 tooth and it goes all the way down to an 11 tooth. So this is a super wide range and I really like that with this. So I don't have to have a two by setup. I can get it to where it's similar to my mountain bikes, but also more capable of higher end speeds with that bigger front chain ring. One other thing I do want to mention on the L2 setup, the rear derailleur does not have a clutch release system. So on a SRAM, you've got that locking mechanism that will lock the cage in place. And on Shimano, you've got the actual disengagement lever for the clutch. So it's easier to get your wheel on and off. With this one, the clutch is always on. You can't shut it off. So getting your back wheel off is a little bit more of a task than what it is with those other name brands. And that's something I wish that uh, L2 would actually address in the future, giving us some sort of on off switch or locking mechanism to hold that cage open. That way one person could take this wheel off without feeling like they need another person there. I definitely can manage to do this by myself, but having a helping hand really does make it easier. And mainly because that derailleur wants to close because that clutch is always engaged. But yeah, that's my experience with these Chinese branded parts over the last year. And I've got to say, it's been fun experimenting with them. And uh, there's things I would do and things I wouldn't do again. I do think I'm going to upgrade these in the near future, possibly for the next season to something wireless. And I would like to try out another brand, like maybe say the Hunt Carbon gravel wheels to compare to these iCans, because these iCans have come out and been just a game changer for this bike. Well, there you go, guys. That's my recommendations and my experience with these two Chinese branded products on my Marin Gestalt X10. If you guys wanna pick up either one of these products, I'll put some links below that you guys can snag these things up and try them out for yourself. But if you guys like this video, hit the subscribe button. And as always, get out there and ride your bike.